You see, the thing about Cambridge is that the exams go on not for one week, not for two weeks, heck, not for three weeks, no, double that. It goes on for six whole weeks. I just, when I'm like, yo, Cambridge, are you okay? I'm, I'm being genuine, I'm being serious. Because six whole weeks, you can have a baby in that time. Anyways, <laughs> because it took so long, I'm gonna have to cram in a lot of the weeks. So from 3rd May to 6th May, it was just a blur of the same monotonous routine of study, study, and study some more. You see, at this point, the only sleep that I got was when I blinked. Hello? Hi, yes, it's been a while. How are you? Yeah, no, um, yeah, it's been just like two months, a month. It felt like forever. Yeah, no, definitely. I'll see you again in August. Yeah. I'm so sorry. That was my friend. Sleep deprivation. That was that stuff. I'm sorry. Um, I just thought of it and I was like, let me do it. So sleep deprivation was my best friend because you see, this week, I had my first geography paper, my two English papers, two of my French papers, and finally, my last math paper. See, I was finally going to close that horrific math binder forever. With so much to do, I waved goodbye to my phone and more importantly to Pinterest. And I absorbed all those geography case studies and literary devices and English vocabulary and French vocabulary and math vocabulary, wait, formulas. And I became a walking encyclopedia, no longer speaking the layman's language, no. Every time I opened my mouth, facts about countries nobody cared about escaped. I was a multilingual goddess, feared by all the land. But anyways, we're getting off topic. Do you know how many case studies are in the geography syllabus? Yeah, me neither, but it's a lot, okay? So my plan of action was simple. I looked at the 2018 case studies and I canceled them out those were not gonna come and i focus more on 2014 to 2016 case studies because you know that plan was definitely foolproof with no loopholes whatsoever <laughs> anyways the geography paper it went well there were no high hurdles to overcome but i think that i used up all my brain power for that paper because later that afternoon when i had my english paper my brain was exhausted and <laughs> I could not comprehend the passage, let alone analyze it and summarize it. So all in all, that experience gets zero stars on Yelp. It was, I would not recommend. So on Wednesday, I barely survived my French listening and I stumbled my way through the French writing. And finally, on Thursday, I met my final math paper. See, I was honestly feeling relieved before I even entered the exam room to start. I was already like, whatever, whatever happens, happens in there, in whatever, there whatever, whatever happens, happens in the battlefield, battle, battle, you're, done, you're done, okay? okay, okay. Like, 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 say, say bye, bye to this chapter, chapter forever. forever. Cherish, Cherish every, every second, second of it of because it, because it, you're done. You're done. <laughs> so with my math paper, there's really nothing to say except that that Pentagon question cost me 10 marks. But anyways, who is surprised anymore, really? So on Friday, English rolled around and I mean, I had to be at the top of my game because that first paper was haunting me. So writing that English paper, Shakespeare himself rolled around in his grave. Like Dickens was shook. Emily Bronte was quaking. No, Jane Austen who? <laughs> I honestly, I honestly became one with the words. I'm honestly, till date, very proud of that paper, even though I know that I messed up somewhere. 